All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we're going deep on something a little different. Uh, you know those motivational speeches, like the super intense ones? Yeah, the ones that are like a double shot of espresso for your goals. Exactly. That's what this deep dive is all about. It should be interesting. We're tackling this speech called Choose Your Hard. And just the title alone kind of makes you rethink things. It does make you think, like, what am I actually willing to struggle for? Right. And the speaker really lays down the gauntlet up front. He doesn't sugarcoat it. No. He's like, life is hard, period. So the question isn't about finding the easy way out. More like, which hard path are you going to choose? Because there will be challenges either way. And he uses these really stark examples. Like discipline versus poverty, you know, those kinds of contrasts. Or the regret of not going for it versus that feeling when you actually achieve something. Yeah, that's a powerful motivator for sure. And he uses this line. It's intense, but it stuck with me. He says, the anguish... The irritation, the frustration that you feel today will be your strength to leave walls tomorrow. I know, right? Makes you think about those tough times totally differently. It's like he's saying the struggle itself can become a source of strength if you let it. Which is interesting because he then goes on this whole tangent about how a 24-hour day is basically a lie. Oh, yeah. He does not hold back on that. He calls it the most stupid, antiquated, ridiculous concept. Something like that. Basically saying it's an outdated way of thinking in today's world. And it's true. Think about it. We can get so much done now in a fraction of the time it used to take. But we're still stuck in this old school mindset of what a day should look like. Yeah, and his solution's pretty wild. He's all about breaking the day into three six-hour blocks. Like mini days, each with their own goals. He claims it's like having 21 work days in a week. That's a lot of days. I know. I'm not sure I could handle that pace. But I get what he's saying about maximizing time. It's about being intentional, right? Yeah. Not letting the clock control you. Exactly. And he connects that idea back to his own story in a really compelling way. He talks about this transition he made from like street hustling to understanding the stock market. Interesting. How does that even come about? Well, he basically says the underlying principles are the same. Really? Whether you're talking Wall Street or the street, it's about drive, strategy, knowing your game. Makes sense in a way. Yeah. And he had this aha moment where he realized he didn't have to just buy stuff. He could own the companies. That's a pretty big shift. Right. But it wasn't easy. He talks about getting out of prison, learning about investing, still needing to hustle for cash in the meantime. So even with knowledge, it wasn't an instant fix. Exactly. It shows that change can be messy even when you're heading in the right direction. And that part where he talks about losing everything except his stock portfolio after getting arrested... That's when it really clicks for him. Yeah, like that's where the long game really becomes clear. Totally. He's building something that can't be taken away. And he talks about working as an iron worker, making good money. Tough job. Right. But he put most of it straight into investments, that kind of discipline. That's serious dedication. Makes you think about our everyday choices. It's easy to go for the quick reward, even when we know it's not what we need long term. He talks about that treat yourself mentality a lot. He does. And I get it. We all deserve nice things. But he's pushing us to think about what we're really working towards. It's like choosing between a sugar rush and actually nourishing yourself. Exactly. And that's where his whole I own that thing comes in. Mm. He's not just talking about owning stocks, literally. More about that ownership mentality, right? Yeah. It's about flipping the script, not just being a consumer, but having a stake in something bigger. And he makes this really interesting connection between ownership and knowledge. Right. Like knowledge is what gives you power. Absolutely. Whether it's understanding how the stock market works or whatever your field is. It levels the playing field. Yeah. And he's so open about the fact that he had to hustle to get there. He learned by doing basically. Yeah, he became a student of the game. And it's funny, even when he talks about ambition, he doesn't use the usual rah-rah language. How so? He talks about fear, but he defines it as finally exiting average reality. Like playing it safe is what's truly terrifying. I see. It's about breaking free from those self-imposed limitations. Exactly. He's saying most of us are capable of so much more, but fear holds us back. And on that note, I did want to ask, because I know some people might get the impression this is all about money. Sure. But he does talk about other aspects of success too, right? He does. He talks about family, relationships, having a support system. Okay, good. Because it's not all about the money. He even says at one point, money without happiness is they broke. That's true. Mm -hmm. So why financial success is a big part of it, it's not the only thing. Which reminds me of something else that really struck me. He says, you should be a monster. That's a bold statement. Right. Sounds intense. Definitely grabs your attention. Yeah. 
But I think what he means is that relentless drive, that focus that high achievers have. It's like he's saying, don't be afraid to go all in on your goals. Yeah. And he's honest about the fact that it's not always easy. He talks about wanting to give up to quit. We have all been there. But then he catches himself and says something like, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm grateful for how far I've come. It's about recognizing your progress, even when it feels slow. It's about acknowledging the journey, right? And he keeps bringing it back to that, like that whole thing he does with TGIF. Oh, yeah. What was it? Thank God I'm alive. Yeah. TGIA. Mm-hmm. Not just waiting for the weekend, but making every day count. Which honestly can feel overwhelming sometimes. Like, how do you keep that energy up? That's the thing, right? He's saying if you're truly passionate about what you're doing, if you've chosen the right hard, mm -hmm. then it doesn't feel like a drag. Yeah, more like you're fueled by it. Exactly. He even says something like, work through lunch, learn something new every day, face your fears. He's intense. Yeah. Like, the discomfort is just part of the process. Yeah. And this is where he makes that distinction between consistency versus intensity. Oh, yeah. I remember that part. He's saying just showing up isn't enough. You have to be all I am. He uses that example of the basketball player, right? Yeah. Thinking that just going to practice means you're on the team. It's about wanting it more than anyone else. Outworking everyone. I like that. Okay. But there's one more thing I wanted to hit on. Because it really gets at how we think about success. He talks about this realization he had that it wasn't just about skill. It was about will. Interesting. Because you can have all the talent in the world, right? Exactly. He talks about being locked and loaded with skill, but still hitting a wall. What was it for him? What changed? It was a mindset shift. Not about moving the mountain, but moving himself. Which, let's be honest, is often the harder part. Totally. We can learn all the techniques, get the right tools, but that inner game. That's the real challenge. Yeah. And he doesn't let you off easy there either. He talks about choices that get you remembered versus choices that make you a legend. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's about legacy then. It's about impact. Asking yourself what you want to leave behind. And this is what's really stuck with me. He talks about all the tough stuff life throws at us. Divorce, job loss, bankruptcy even. That things most people would consider failures. Right. But he's like, what if those are just opportunities in disguise? I mean, it's a different way of looking at it. What if losing that job forced you to finally start that business? What if that relationship ending helped you figure out what you really want? It's about finding the growth within the struggle. It's like he's saying it's all hard anyway, so choose the hard that leads to something better. Exactly. And that's what I love about this speech. It's not just a bunch of tips. It's a whole new perspective on challenges, on time, even on success itself. It's about taking control, making choices even when they're tough, and realizing you have more power than you think. So there you have it, folks. Our deep dive into choose your hard. Intense, for sure. <laughs> but also incredibly empowering. We'd love to hear your thoughts. What hard will you choose?